My name is Susan Trinder. I grew up in Lant Street. We had the best view of the gallows, and on hanging days, people paid money to watch from our top window. No, it's Sue, now you put the kettle on. Let me see, I want to see. Susan Trinder, her mother was hanged for murder. She died again, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear girl, come on then, up you come. Let me Oh, quick, quick. My name is Maud Lilly, and I was brought up in the madhouse where my mother died giving birth to me. Maud, Maud, you have a visitor. A visitor? I can't remember in all these years. Why is your tongue black? Shh. Come on. She's as undersized as her voice is loud. Can she whisper? Of course I can. Whisper. Can she be silent? Let me see it. My mother, sir. My sister. Let us hope it will remind you of her fate and prevent you from sharing it. Can she read? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I'll take it. I'll send my housekeeper to collect her tomorrow. I won't go. You shan't make me. I want to stay with you, matron. I won't go. If our friend had known the ins and outs of this little number, oh, he'd have never been topped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, look at that. Honest as the day. You're going to make our fortune, aren't you, Sue? Am I? Ain't she, Mr Ribs? Mm. I was brought up by Mrs Suxby, who was paid to look after me for a week when I was a baby. But she kept me all those years. If that ain't love, I don't know what is.
the Briar Bell. This is where your mother lived. You are to be a lady, as she was. For all her fortune, she turned to the bad. It's to be hoped you turn out better than she did. You haven't finished your eggs? spoiling his books. How's her temper, Mrs. Stiles? Rather ill, sir. Where are her gloves? Threw them at me, sir. Give me your hand, Maud. Give me your hand. You won't forget the gloves in future, will you, Maud? Put them on. Cover is to be touched or a leaf to be turned without them. Do you understand? You realize why I brought you here, Maud? To, to make a lady of me. <laughs> make a secretary of you, Maud. I couldn't read. All I knew about letters was what I picked out of stolen wipers. I was a fingersmith. A thief. You're a treasure, Sue. Melt down this little number, will you, John? Treasure? I'd like to melt her down. Wait, wait. wait. <laughs> Don't ask about, John. I'll knock your bloody head off. There you are. I'll knock it off. Come on! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You just try it. Come on. Oh! Mrs. Saxby was a baby farmer. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Paid to look after unwanted babies. Poor little scraps. tell you tonight there will be a new gentleman at your reading. An artist, Mr. Richard Rivers. He'll be here for a week mounting pictures for the catalogue. He'll also be giving you lessons in painting.
So they came together. The romance may have been somewhat unusual, but that gave it all the charm of the unexpected. And there, as the red sun tinges the sky and the chatter of birds heralds the coming night, we must leave them. Wonderful, Miss Lily. You read so beautifully. If only the patrons of my bookshop on Hollywell Street could hear you. Your words are pure poetry. Music, us. <laughs> Music. Thank you, Maud. <clears throat> Rivers, you say nothing. Does it not please you? I cannot find words, sir. Ah, there you see us. The young rogue has beaten us. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, sir. I have the first edition which you require. Have you indeed? I'm sorry to disturb you, but I'm concerned you might find it a little chill after the fire. The fire is very hot. It is. You're right. Very hot. Very hot indeed. What will you do when this great catalogue is finished? It will never be finished. Come, Miss Lily, you mean you'll remain here forever? I have no choice. You're young, handsome. I say it not for gallantry's sake, I say what I see. You might do anything. You are a man, Mr. Rivers, and might do anything. I am a woman and might do nothing. Jack of diggers on a bitch of arts. Ain't you slow? Gentleman told us he'd gambled away his fortune and was obliged to get money the old fashioned way by thievery and dodging. I worked on the old man's catalogue in the morning and in the afternoon I worked on her. Tall of painting that is. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Her maid, Agnes, was the most agreeable chaperone. Love, as love will, was finding its way. <laughs> At the end of the week, the agreeable Agnes gets scarlet fever and is sent home to Ireland. The housekeeper, who with bad grace takes over temporarily, is as tight on the girl as her corset. Said she'd no time to chaperone. No more painting! 
Damn it, I was nearly there. There. Where's there, gentlemen? She's as rich as a queen, Mr. Ribs. How rich? 30,000 in ready. 10,000 in funds. Left to her in her mother's will. She can't touch it unless she marries. And her uncle makes sure she never will by keeping her close. That house is her prison. But you're going to marry her? Oh, then I could do what I like with her. Won't her uncle ask a few questions about you? That's why I've become the exemplary Mr. Richard Rivers. I will. Marry her. <laughs> with the help of Sue. Me? You're going to become her friend. Persuade her to trust me, to run away and marry me. Why me? A fingersmith with a heart of gold, Sue. Not going to be a bleeding maid, am I, Mrs. Suxby? I take my Sue. Because she's yours, and I know she can do it. And how would you cut the shine? Sue will get £2,000. Don't you do it. I've been a maid, and I? Stuck in a pin in the lady's ass, as I recall. She was an old bitch. You're the old bitch. Think of all the money we lost. <laughs> where is this place? Out in the country. Don't know where the bleeding country is. I'm a Londoner. Never been out of smoke, have I? Get on. She'd never accept me. You're my old nurse's child, Susan Smith. You would have an impeccable character reference from Lady Stonely of Curzon Crescent Mayfair. Oh, she'll swallow it. The girl's never been to London. She's a bit simple. A pigeon. <laughs> it'll be a bit of a holiday for you, Sue. And it'll work. Bleeding long holiday if it don't. I won't do it. Not for two. I want £3,000. Take it or leave it. Susan has been mating for a lady who has married and gone to India, so she has lost her place. Susan is a very good girl, I wrote, but... And I, and I put this rather well, I think. I fear she will go to the bad unless she finds further employment. No! You never wrote that! You never! Oh, my God! What's all this cake up? Your job! Yeah, you have to dress her. Take them off. Maids don't wear bangles. Shimmy. Shimmies. Shimmies. Oh, you have to warm it. God's sake. Do you mind raising your arms, miss? Sue, how many Stop more times? Me. Bleeding frill! She's a lady. Shy. But she'll pick up like anything with me and Sue to teach her. Won't you, Doc? <clears throat> there, you sweet little bitch! What happens after you're married? I told you, she's a bit simple. Living with her uncle will tip her over the brink. After we're married, I'll put her in a madhouse and there she'll stay. I need your help to get her there. I don't like that. It's in her blood. Her mother was mad and she'll end up there anyway. Take it or leave it, Sue. That's for the extra thousand. Three thousand pounds, Sue. And you can have any of the lady's frocks and jewels. She won't need it in the madhouse. Is there anything else you haven't told me? That's it. Now undress her. I shall be glad to meet Miss Susan Smith. All the more so, Mr. Rivers, because she will have come to me from a London man. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen, the toast. So, so, so. Here's your character and gentleman's best hand. He'll see you to the coach and join you in a month's time. Oh, you look a picture. A real picture. Oh, I'd do it, Mrs. Suxby. Ain't it a mean trick to plan that poor girl? Sue, are you coming? If they catch me, will they hang me? No! 
so. What is this sort of talk? That's not going to happen. You're going to make us all rich. I am, aren't I? Come on, you'll miss the coach. Take a quick, I don't want to see it. We'd never been parted before. I think she took it worse than what I did. I never knew there was so much of it. Mile after bleeding mile. Miss Smith, leave that till the morning. Oh. We keep early hours, Briar, and Mr. Lilly cannot bear noise. If I'd known how to get out of that bleeding place, I would have scarpered there and then. But when I saw her, I thought, this is going to be easy. Is it right, miss? That is very satisfactory, Susan. May I call you Susan? Thank you, miss. You read, of course. A bit? Well, my uncle is a scholar. Books are a very important part of life at Briar. Please, read me something. Anything. <clears throat> Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed. I might be taught it, miss. Taught? No. I shouldn't allow it. Not to be able to read. I sometimes think how wonderful that would be. Um, Got my rooms in order, collect me from the library at one. You mean I'm to start right away, miss? Yes, of course. She was an odd one, all right. Didn't think she was cracked. Not like what gentlemen said.
Oh my lord! Oh Mrs. Styles, you did startle me. I was just trying to put Miss Maud's things in order. So I see. These should be given each morning to Mr. Way, the steward. That's his little perk, is it? The pieces of soap that Miss Maud leaves on her washstand, you may keep. Thank you, Mrs. Styles. But I really don't like to. Lady Alice, she would have thought it's thieving. As you wish. Yes. Who the devil are you? My new maid uncle. Oh. The finger! Girl, the finger! You must not go beyond there. Does she have her name? Susan... Softer. Her name is Susan Smith, Uncle. Teach her to speak softly. I will, Uncle. Uh, Mrs. Stiles keeps a most careful account of Wood and Coal. Tell her we economise for burning the candles right down to the wick. Don't you worry about her, miss. I know her kind. Do you know my uncle's kind? I'm sure he's very clever, miss. Writing a big dictionary, the servants say. I'm sorry, Susan. I should have warned you. Miss? I certainly won't go over the finger in future. <laughs> they're very nice, miss. Oh, Susan, they're terrible. But I do hope to improve under Mr. Rivers. I trust he is well? Very well indeed, miss. And sends his compliments. He looks forward very much to seeing you at the end of the month. Do you consider him handsome? Lady Stoney considers him to be one of the most handsome men in London, miss. I think Mr. Rivers is a good man. Very good indeed, miss. them ever since I came here as a child. And I'm still afraid of my own dream. <laughs> Stay with me. I can't do that, please. Please. That's how it was. That night. And all the following nights. Pops and me to help her sleep.
We were always together, like sisters. Like the sisters neither of us had ever had. She wasn't odd. It was only living in that horrible place that had made her seem so. She never left it. Never went beyond the river. She never danced. Never played games. Like me, she'd never had a sweetheart. And as the weeks passed, I forgot gentlemen. I only had that old brown dress, but she gave me some of her own. This is your past. A kind lady with a good heart. A parting, a strife. An older gentleman. Very stern. Well, I've no idea who that might be, do you mean? <laughs> Who's that? A young man. I will. Marry her. With a good heart. Don't go on, Sue. But I must miss. Oh, your luck will desert you. Oh, a journey. After we're married, I'll put her in a madhouse and there she'll stay. <laughs> Perhaps a journey of the heart. Show me the last one. It should have been the love card. But I dropped it. I don't like your fortune telling, Sue. I want to hear about London. What steps they do for the balls. like a coal lever, for all he cared. So long as she had £40,000 in the bank. Shan't I? It's so sharp. It's all red where it cut you. I used to do this to Mrs. Saxby's infants. Who's Mrs. Saxby? Parlour maid went bad, had twins. I'd... More? Mm -hmm. Shh, keep still. He's here to steal your fortune and put you in the madhouse. But she wouldn't have believed me. Welcome back, Mr. Rivers, sir. Oh. 
Charles, my boots have been missing you. Oh, I shall get them up like mirrors, Mr. Rivers. <laughs> I... I missed you, sir. Mr. Wade. Sir? This is Stiles. It's wonderful to be back at Briar. Miss Lily, how very kind of you to receive me. Welcome to Brian, Mr. Rivers. Miss Lily, I, I, I do apologize. I'm in such a tumbled, traveled, stained state. Would you rather be taken to your rooms? Uh, no, no, no. This, this greeting refreshes me more. It, it is Susan Smith. I, I have got that right, at least. Yes, sir. Do you like your place here? Yes, sir. I hope you're proving a good girl for your mistress, Susan. Susan is very good. I thought she would be, with you as her example. You're too kind, Mr. Rivers. Well, who could not be with you to be kind to? The pictures for the catalogue must be mounted in three weeks, Rivers. Well, they'll be done, sir. Three weeks. He spent one week on still life. Still death, more like. And another week on landscape. Just... But he got nowhere. Fresh sheet for our first landscape. You have an eye for the essence of things, does she not, Susan? You just need... What? You can speak plainly to me, Mr. Rivers. I'm not a child. Only take you to London, to my studio there. You have no lack of talent, Miss Lily. In terms of artistic creation, you only lack what your sex as a whole lacks. And what is that? The liberty of mind. Bad dreams, good. Excellent. Does she talk about me, though? She talks about nothing else. About marriage? Why don't you ask her to marry her? I'll frighten her off. I don't miss making the wrong move. Next week, the prince will be done and I'll have to leave. You will have to work on her harder. Convince her she's in love with me. Damn it, Sue! That girl's worth 3,000 pounds to you!
I saw what the evil bastard was about. He was going to kiss her. But not on the lips. Somewhere better. Much better. I'm so sorry I must rush back to that wretched print. You will be all right, Maud. You sure? Hooked, but you must draw her in. I'll take these, Susan. Get your mistress back to the house. Oh. Oh. <sighs> Mr. Rivers has asked me to marry him. Oh, me. Are you not pleased? Sue? What is it? Surprise, miss. Oh, pleased. I'm gladder than anything in the world. Then I am sad because I have not said yes to him. How can I? My uncle will never agree. Mr. Rivers says we might go away at night. Marry in a small church near here. Susan, look kindly on foolish lovers. I'm sure the light's better in the next room. I'm ever so sorry, Mr. Rivers, but Mr. Lily wouldn't like it. Sue, I'll drop you. My old nurse will be taken ill and need a sweet little niece and you'll be back in Land Street with nothing. I'll tell Mr. Lily. I'll tell her. Tell them what, you stupid bitch? What you came here to do? I've just gone too far to believe you. She must marry me now or be as good as ruined, locked up here for the rest of her life. Miss. 
Oh, Max, don't you love him? You might say no. Say no? And watch him leave? Don't you think I should then wonder over and over again what sort of life I might have had? Oh, Max, yes. What is it? Your mother would have done it and not given it a thought. What is it, Sue? Three thousand pounds, Sue. Marion, miss. Mr. Rivers loves you, and love never hurt a flea. All right, I will. But only if you come with me to London. Will you, Sue? Be my maid and show me London. Say you will. I understand the, uh, the parson is sympathetic to... Affairs of the heart. <laughs> How soon? It must be this week. And we need somewhere quiet to stay. Like the cottage you could use. Thank you, sir. The wedding was fixed. They were going to elope in two days' time and marry at midnight. On her wedding night, what must a wife do? I know you're awake. Soon. For God's sake, Miss. What? I must know. I, I know something from books. How can you know it from books? You're right. I know nothing, nothing, nothing. What will happen? Will he kiss me? I should think so, miss. Where? On your lips. Is that it? No, miss. The kissing starts you off. It will come to you, miss. <sighs> Dancing didn't come to me. It was very difficult. You had to teach me. Oh, Miss Maud. I don't think kisses can start me off. Mr. Rivers' kisses never have. You're a beautiful young girl. Look, where are your lips? No. No, not like that. Look, imagine that I'm Mr. Rivers. Curious. Wanting thing. That's right. It wants Mr. Rivers. Oh, you must do it now, I mean. Oh, I don't know what they mean. I mean, you must do it sometime, mustn't you, Miss? I'm afraid. Oh, don't be frightened.
Wonderful thick sleep I had. And no jobs, no dreams. Only one. I think. I think you're in it. <sighs> Me. You're marrying Mr. Griffiths. more I can do for you before you leave, Mr. Rivers. We shall be leaving too. If I'd have said I love you, she'd have said it back, and everything would have been different. I might have saved her. I might have found a way to keep her from her fate. Four on Tuesday examines the work of the author of Fingersmith, Sarah Waters, Sex and the Victorian City, is at 11.20. Bedding his way through the court of King George, Casanova's up to no good over on BBC Three in a couple of minutes. A taster here on BBC One in just a moment. <laughs>